And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Quizmas. Thanks for joining me today for a quick chat and our cup of coffee. And so I wanted to continue with my recommendations for spiritual reading as I've been doing the past couple of weeks. And this week we've got a classic, right? This isn't the story of a modern elder or saint that just came out in the last five or ten years. This is The Way of a Pilgrim. And if you get the correct edition, a pilgrim continues his way. Classic of Russian spirituality. Again, you can see not a big book. It's a little book. Not too big, very quick and easy read, but a classic of spirituality. If you don't have it, you haven't read it yet, you have to pick it up. Again, it's available on Amazon, very inexpensive. I don't even think it's $10, uh, but a wonderful book. And it's telling us the story of this pilgrim living in um, 19th century, I believe, Russia, and his travels as he's trying to find out about unceasing prayer. He's in church and he hears the epistle reading from Thessalonians which tells us to pray without stopping, right? And, and that hits him. It's like, well, how do you do that? And so, well, he goes from place to place and he talks to people, lay people, monks, priests, trying to figure out the answer. And uh, this is the record of that journey. And it's wonderful because it's so simple and so beautiful and beautifully written. And um, I wanted to read just a, a little snippet uh, from the book, just a couple smart, uh, smart short passages. Uh, the book begins, right? The very first lines of the book are this. By the grace of God, I am a Christian. By my deeds, a great sinner. And by calling a homeless wanderer of the lowest status in life. My possessions comprise but some rusk in a knapsack on my back and the Holy Bible on my chest, and that is all. So this is all that he possesses in life. And think about that. We have so much distraction in our life, so many things that we worry about, so many possessions that we worry about. Think about it. If you could only have a bag on you, right? Literally on your back, a backpack, so to speak. And the only thing that you could own in the world had to fit in that backpack and in your pockets. What would you put in that bag, right? When we boil it down and try to simplify. And so we think about this in Lent. It's a wonderful instruction for us in Lent to realize that we prioritize God first. And we think about the necessity of salvation, and also that there are people out there that are struggling. Um, we find out, I think, later in the book that he ends up having one arm that's lame. He's paralyzed, and that's one of the reasons that he is, in fact, a, a wanderer and a pilgrim. He's not able to find normal work. And uh, so this is, you know, again, an idea for us as a reminder of all of the ways that we can help people and by valuing what's really important in our life. One of the other things that's interesting is he ends up finding an elder that teaches him a little bit about unceasing prayer. And he does that by giving him a book which teaches about that prayer called the Philokalia, Writings of the Fathers on Prayer of the Heart. And so this is another wonderful short snippet of a little miracle that occurs um, for him while he's trying to learn about that book. So he falls asleep and it says, I dreamt that I was in the cell of my departed elder who was explaining the Philokalia to me. He was saying, there is deep wisdom in this holy book. In my dream, still holding the book in my hands, I was trying to find a particular instruction, but I failed. Then the elder, remember, this is he's still dreaming. Then the elder went through a few pages himself saying, here it is, let me mark it for you. And with a piece of charcoal picked up from the floor, he indicated with the mark on the margin the chapter he had found. I listened to him carefully trying to remember word for word what he had been saying. It was still dark when I woke up. I lay quietly thinking of my dream and of the words of my elder. God alone knows, I said to myself, whether I have really seen the spirit of my departed elder or only imagined it in my mind, for it is constantly riveted on the Philokalia and on him. Pray to this doubt, I rose at daybreak, and behold, the book lay on a stone which I used as a table in my dugout. Again, he's living in a little kind of a hut. It was open at the very page which my elder had indicated to me, with the charcoal mark on the margin, just as I had seen it in my dream, and the charcoal lay next to the book. I looked in amazement, for the book had not been there the evening before. On that point, my recollection was clear. I had closed it and slipped it under my pillow. Neither had there been the charcoal on it. I was quite sure of that, too. So again, part of the beauty of this book, little simple stories and telling us about the simplicity of life, our yearning for prayer, and also, as we just heard in that one, the importance of having spiritual guides that can give us a little bit of help along our journey and our struggle. 
It might be a parish priest for us or a monastic that we visited in a monastery, but we need some little help as much as we can along the way, just as a reminder. Once again, a beautiful, simple little book that you can pick up anywhere. You can get it on Amazon for five or ten dollars and thumb through it and read to get a little bit of benefit spiritually. Of course, the main book we want to be reading always is the Bible. I don't think I have to tell people as a priest, hey, you should read your Bible. Maybe I should. But additional reading is also of benefit, something like The Way of a Pilgrim and The Pilgrim Continues His Way, absolute classics of Orthodox spirituality and would be of great benefit to us as we're getting ready for Holy Week. Once again, may our Lord and Savior bless us and keep us this day and every day. Amen.